Uh, good day, sir. I was told by a mutual acquaintance that you had the secrets to the best build for Hunter around these parts. Yeah, who said that? They would prefer to remain anonymous, but you know something, I can tell. Uh, what makes you say that? You have a look on you that says, I love watching things explode. Or you committed a murder recently. Murder? Murder. Murder? Um, yes, murder. Stop doing that. Stop. The soot on your clothes have given me all the information I need. Ow. Who are you? A world-famous detective who doesn't cheese Riven. Not even once. Right, for sure. Right. Not even once. I've cracked the code. The secret to the build is... Guys, Benoit Block has figured it out. Today, Hunters, it is your turn for a nuke build, and we are calling this one Knives Out. It is all about making sure you have an overcharged explosive knife ready to cut anything down in its way. Well, it, it doesn't just cut. It's more of a sharp and pointy mini nuke. Keep an eye on your fingers because this build is a sharp one. So like the famous Southern detective figured out, Mr. Teagues is going to give you guys the clues into one of my best builds yet. And the dim links, they're down in the comments, which by the way, while you're down there, say hi and hit the like button. Jumping into our solar kit we are of course running blade barrage because you can't have a build called knives out and bring a gun to a knife fight wouldn't you want that shut up bro nobody asked blade barrage as you know is where you vault into the air and unleash a volley of solar charged explosive knives this super used to get you laughed at in the crucible but with solar 3.0 giving this super some juice and given the fact that pvp is a barren wasteland blade barrage is our choice for more than just the theme of this build next for this build we are running gambler's dodge and mostly for a fail safe no not that one when using gambler's dodge near enemies it fully recharges your main ability ideally for this build you won't need this but it's there just in case you get stuck outside the loop i've cooked up moving next to our grenade my two picks are the fusion grenade and the incendiary grenade i like the fusion grenade more given its high damage output shorter cooldown and ease of use but incendiary for applying scorch is good too finally moving to our melee we are running you guessed it the proximity explosive knife which attaches the surfaces upon impact and explodes when it detects a nearby target this will likely indicate our exotic but don't read ahead guys this story is just getting good no one likes spoilers Moving into our aspects, I'm going to give you guys a choice. If you want higher ability cooldown, run on your mark. Not for its direct utility, like we're literally not even going to cover what it does, but for its two additional fragment slots. If you want to make more explosions and have more fun, run Gunpowder Gamble, where defeating targets with abilities, solar debuffs, or solar weapons charges up an improvised solar explosive. This explosive can be shot in midair to cause an ignition. This ability was definitely all original and not at all borrowed from any other games. That said, with on your mark versus gunpowder, I personally lead towards gunpowder gamble because explosions make me happy you all know this in addition to that this build should give you a gunpowder gamble basically every time it's not on cooldown for our other aspect we are of course running knock them down where your solar supers are enhanced it says some stuff about golden gun that isn't relevant and blade barrage launches more projectiles it also adds while radiant final blows with your equip throwing knife fully refunds your melee energy this will be very important later we call this foreshadowing fragments are next and first up we have ember of blistering where defeating targets with solar ignition grants grenade energy your knife will be more than handling this, don't you worry. Next, we have Ember of Benevolence, where applying Restoration, Cure, or Radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee, and class ability regeneration for a short duration. Get rewarded again for throwing all those knives, why don't you? We all love gassing up our friends, and Ember of Benevolence rewards you for it. Finally, if you're running Gunpowder Gamble, your last fragment should be Ember of Torches, where powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. Knives Out is the name of this build, and throwing knives all the time is literally the objective, so why not reward yourself with a damage bonus. Oh, remember knock them down where it will refund melee energy on melee final blows while radiant? Yep, it's all coming together. If you decide to run on your mark, the final two fragments are Ember of Char, where your solar ignition spreads scorch to affected targets, and Ember of Ashes, where we apply more scorch stacks to targets. So that is our solar kit. But if you think that's it, oh no, we're just getting started. Let's talk about our weapons. In our kinetic slot, pretty much with all of my builds, you have your choice of what to run here. I'm running a Riptide here, but really you can run whatever you want. Grenade launchers would be my next choice, but Riptide has been way too fun lately. Next, our exotic of choice is Tiku's Divination, which is that bow that still somehow manages to dodge being banned, even though it's an obvious cheater. Tiku's Divination, aka isn't Lemonarch better, says everyone in the comments, is an exotic solar bow introduced back in Season 13 that is now available from the Monument to Lost Lights as long as you own Beyond Light. Its exotic perk, Sacred Flame, states, hip firing this weapon fires multiple sus tracking projectiles. Targets marked by these projectiles explode upon death or when struck by another Sacred Flame's explosion. Its intrinsic perk, Causality arrows states arrows fired while aiming down sites cause sacred flames to instantly detonate. Per 
precision hits with perfectly drawn arrows increase the power of this detonation. This bow deals a ton of damage, and it doesn't stop there. It's infuriatingly difficult to complete Catalyst adds Causality Quiver, where perfectly drawn arrows that detonate Sacred Flames increase arrow damage. Striking targets unaffected by Sacred Flame instead refreshes Causality Arrows' as duration. This uh, increase to arrow damage at face value is probably like, yeah, whatever, give me the 20 or 30 percent and be done with it. But I promise this Catalyst is worth the headache to complete because it will scale from adding 17 percent all the way up to 105 percent bonus arrow damage at six stacks. So yeah, I know PvP is a pain right now and you'd rather pull out a completely balanced bow like Luminarch, but stick it out with this Catalyst and watch the damage fly places you didn't think possible. Tikus is a ton of fun once you get the hang of hip firing then ADSing because everything just explodes, which as you know, is my kink. Don't judge. You clicked on this video, so it's probably yours too, don't lie. Finally, for our heavy weapon, I'm running a Code Duello, but if you have a high damage dealing solar option or something else you like, feel free to substitute it in. Cataclysmic, the Raid Linear Fusion, is also a great option that I tried. I said solar mainly to take advantage of some stuff I have coming up, but if you have other shields you have to match, sub something in it will. Every Guardian needs clothes, and while it's important to be absolutely dripped, I do like a decent amount of functionality. And no, you can't convince me that the Supreme Brick serves a purpose besides bringing an overpriced brick. It's not just a boulder, it's a rock. For our armor, I'm going to go through my mods, then cover stats to focus at the end. On our helmet, I'm running double hands-on, where you gain bonus super energy on melee kills. I doubled the mod because we get a higher average amount of super energy on each kill. You could sub in Harmonic Siphon if you want to create orbs of power on kills with Tikus, but that's up to you. Next, we have Melee Wellmaker, because obviously we do on an exploding melee-based build. Melee Wellmaker does exactly what you think it does. Powered melee final blows spawn elemental wells matching your subclass energy type. Yep, you're shocked. I know that mod's function versus its name probably caught you off guard. It's okay. Reading is hard. Moving to our arms and our exotic of choice, we have a new exotic introduced this season, Caliban's Hand. Caliban's Hand adds the perk Roastum, which is exactly what you all do to me in the comments of every single video. That said, these gloves add that your proximity knife scorches targets it damages with its explosions and ignites targets on final blow. In addition, after throwing a proximity knife, you gain increased melee regeneration until that knife explodes. So if your aim is bald YouTuber tier, don't worry. Caliban's hand is on your shoulder like, it's okay, little trash can, try again. This exotic is absolutely wild. Adding Scorch to targets or priming them with Tikus basically ensures at least one ignition, and usually there are several. Uh, by the way, guys, don't worry. Synergy and the gameplay loop are coming. For mods, we are running Impact Induction, where causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. Yep. What you're thinking is correct. I left room for a champ mod in case you need it. And finally, our staple of these builds, Explosive Wellmaker. Explosive Wellmaker, like Melee Wellmaker, well, I'll let you guess what it does. If you guess that rapidly defeating combatants with explosive damage spawns a solar elemental well, you read it at least a third grade level. I'm proud of you. Explosive knives, tikus, grenades, you all see the well potential here. And by the way, Explosive Wellmaker and Melee Wellmaker can activate at the same time. So things like this are pretty regular. Moving to our chest, we have a lot of room for reserve or resist mods if you want. Nothing else you can put besides that. It's like how scavenger mods used to be in PvP for all of our highly skilled, obviously not special weapon crutching guardians. They're top 5% in control, you know? Oh, yikes, your KD isn't high enough to keep watching, so, um... Sorry about that. Finally, on our chest, we have Font of Might, where picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of that same elemental type. Figured we could always juice Tikus up more. Oh, and whatever solar heavy option you're running as well. Moving to our legs, you have a ton of room for a scav mod if you want. Innervation, which reduces grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. And Well of Ordnance, where picking up a solar elemental well grants you additional grenade energy. This is 10% per well with one copy of the mod. And let's just say when this build is fully up and running, one knife can and basically give you back your grenade. Finally, to our class item and the fun stuff. We have two seasonal mods with flame harvesting and solar fulmination. And if you're watching this after the season is over, I'll update a pinned comment with my favorite substitutes. So flame harvesting states, solar exotic final blows create solar elemental wells. Tikus is all I have to say, booms and all. Solar fulmination basically further roids out your throwing knife by adding that our ignitions do increased damage in an increased radius. Remember when I said it's a sharp and pointy mini nuke? I wasn't lying. I wouldn't do that to you guys. I love you way too much. Hell, I call you beautiful at the end of every video. So uh, yeah, show me you love me too by hitting that sub button and smacking the like button like it owes you a PVP map or two. Finally, on our class item, a staple in these builds, we have Bountiful Wells, which basically takes all of our well creation mods and doubles their effect. So to recap, we have Melee Wellmaker, Flame Harvesting, and Explosive Wellmaker all getting doubled. Yes, 
I have seen six wells spawn at the same time. Balanced, I know. By the way, if you're trying this build out in end game content, I would sub well of ordinance for well of life for added healing, sub solar fulmination for molten overload, making your nades overload, and sub flame harvesting for withering heat, which will weaken champions with solar abilities. Molten overload and withering heat is actually kind of a nasty combo if you haven't tried it. Before we move on, our stats should look like this. For PVE, having high resilience and recovery are always my highest priority for survivability. After that, I would build for strength, discipline, mobility and intellect in that order. I know you hunters are always like 10,000 mobility is essential for being the dancy boys and girls you are, but don't worry, you'll have your dodge plenty. Just breathe a little and dodge every five to 10 seconds instead of the ridiculous bullshit y'all pull when you have radiant dance machines on. I've given you all of the tools. How does it all work? Strap in because this is about to get thick with like seven C's. Ideally, you want to prime targets first. I did this with Tiku's hip fire or by throwing a grenade. Follow that up immediately with your knife and it should be like a tornado in a trailer park and remove anything from the area. Your nade, knife, or hell, even Tikus should proc explosive well maker. Tikus should proc flame harvesting, and the knife will proc both radiant with ember of torches and melee well maker. While radiant, keep trying to get kills with your knife as it will extend radiant and immediately refund your melee energy on each final blow with each explosion and kill, creating wells with both melee and explosive well maker. All of those melee kills are flowing into hands on, giving you super energy, and all of these wells are flowing back into your grenade, which, by the way, is easy to forget about in a build called Knives Out. Couldn't call it bombs away because you YouTube would not have enjoyed that title. Solar Fulmination all the while is giving us more boom for our buck and Font of Might is basically ready in case we actually want to use our weapons for a change. Ember of Blistering is giving us grenade energy for each ignition. Ember of Char is spreading Scorch. Ashes is boosting our Scorch. And Ember of Benevolence is continuing to give us ability energy back for giving our friends and fire team the roids they deserve. And if you do end up falling out of the loop and miss a knife, Caliban's Hand will give you a huge boost to melee regen. But let's say you don't miss, but you don't get a kill. Dodge and start the entire thing over again. So that is the entire vicious cycle to knives out a gunpowder gamble basically every single time it's off cooldown and when this build is fully up and running it's stupid fun and a little ridiculous like i got mad when other people took my kills because i just want my knife to make everything explode like get the f out of my way i'm testing things and i want explosions is that too much to ask and i really hate I'm fine, I promise. So that is Knives Out, our first, but definitely not our last Hunter nuke build. Given that I'm not a Hunter main, Hunters, if there's anything that you'd change, let me know in the comments down below. My community in my Discord had a hand in helping me craft this build. So to those of you in my Discord who helped, thank you so much, you know who you are. If you aren't part of the Discord yet, link is down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for future shenanigans and builds. Hit that like button to make sure that this video gets to more Guardians. And until next time, I've been Teagues, you've been beautiful. Peace.